Okay, this is chapter eight. This is your uh, chapter review sheet uh, for integer operations. There are 24 questions, is that right? 24 ish? 20 something, anyway. First three questions are just fill in the blank questions. It says number one, integers include positive and negative whole numbers, as well as, or and, the answer is the number zero. So zero is included in integers. Now, an interesting note is that negative 2.6 is not an integer but negative two is. So in order for it to be considered an integer, it has to be a positive or negative whole number and or the number zero. Question two, when following the order of operations or bed mass to evaluate negative two plus bracket four minus nine divided by five times three, the first thing you would do according to that, well, since bed mass is an acronym helping us figure out what to do first, we would do any brackets. And inside those brackets, there is something to accomplish. We have to subtract nine from four so brackets would be the first thing that we would do so the answer is brackets and question three an integer chip representing positive one which we use this here and an integer chip re representing negative one which we have like that put together is called a what it's called a zero pair a zero pair question number four what multiplication statement does each set of diagrams represent well here in a we are adding we are adding two groups of uh, negative five. And when we add two groups of negative five to nothing, we end up with uh, a group of negative 10, which is represented right here. In the second one, we start with zero again, but this time we remove, we remove four groups of positive two. And when we remove uh, four groups of positive two, we're left with negative eight right here. So those are your two uh, equations or statements for those pictures. Question five says simply determine each product and we know our sign rules for products and division. If the signs are the same, like positive times a positive or negative times a negative, our products will be positive for both of those. And if we're multiplying opposite integers, we will have a negative product. So those are our sign rules in effect. So we could just do A, B, C, and D without uh, looking at the signs. Three times three is nine, four times five is 20. 2 times 1 is 2, and 5 times 3 is 15. And then we can go back and use their sign rules to determine whether they're positive or negative. Same signs will be a positive 9. Different signs will be a negative 20. Same signs will be a positive 2. And different signs will be a negative 15. Question 6. A lot of people struggled with this one. It says a sloth took 9 minutes to climb down a tree at 2, minutes, two meters a minute. How far did it climb down? The easiest way for us to figure this out is to draw a picture. So I'm going to draw a wonderful picture of a sloth. And that's what a sloth looks like. Up close. Actually, has very long arms and really long legs. And he's really slow. So a sloth is up in a tree, and it takes it takes him nine minutes to go all the way down. Nine minutes. And for each of those minutes, it takes two meters a minute. So two, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's nine groups. So each of those minutes, he goes down two meters. So he goes down two meters here. He goes two down two meters here, et cetera, et cetera. How long would it take him to climb down the tree? It would take him 18 minutes to climb down. Oh, sorry, not 18 minutes. How far is the tree? So if he takes him nine minutes and two meters a minute, then nine minutes times two meters would be 18 meters. Therefore, if I think about the question a little bit better than I just did, the tree is 18 meters. How how far did the sloth climb down? 18 meters. Question 7 says determine the product using a number line. So for A, we know that our product is going to be negative 18, so we're going to start here at 0. And adding three groups of negative 6. So one group of negative 6, two groups of negative 6, three groups of negative 6, one group of negative 6, two groups of negative 6, three groups of negative 6 makes negative 18. And for B, I know my product is going to be 8, so I'm just going to make my number line from 0 to 8. It says adding four groups of positive 2. One group of positive 2, two groups of positive 2, three groups of positive 2, four groups of positive 2. It's represented on the number line like such. Question 8 says calculate. So we're, not, we're going to do the same thing as before. We're just going to calculate our product. So 7 times 8 is 56. And 12 times 9, well, 10 times 9 is 90. And 2 times 9 is 18. So 90 and 18 is 108. 
So now that we have our products down, we're going to check for our signs. This will be a negative because our integer signs are different. And this will be a positive because our integer signs are the same. Question 9 says estimate, then calculate. So for A, for estimation, I'm going to write down EST to represent the word estimation. And I'm going to round to the greatest place value. For 22, I'm going to make it just 20 because it's going to round down. And 35 is going to go up to 40. So my estimation will be positive 800. Now to calculate, you may use a calculator, which I recommend highly on these ones. 22 times 35, so 22 times 35. The product is the calculation, so I'm going to put CALC, is 770, so positive 770. For B, I'm going to estimate by using negative 50 multiplied by positive 10, which will be an estimation of negative 500. My calculation, I can't remember what they were, 49 and 13. So negative 49 times positive 13 equals negative 637. So my calculation is negative 637. Question 10 says the products of two integers is negative 99. What could the two integers be? Give at least four possible answers. So. The product of 99, if I ignore signs, you can do 1 times 99. Uh, since 9 plus 9 is 18, and 18 is a, is a multiple of 3, we know that 3 is a factor. So 3 times 33 works, and 9 times 11 works. Okay, As well as uh, 11 times 3, and 33 times 3. Or sorry, not 11 times 3, 11 times 9. 33 times 3, and 99 times 1. So if we think about all the different ways to multiply to get uh, 99, given the fact that the integers can be different, those are the ones we can use. And since it's negative, our signs have to be opposite. So a positive 1 times a negative 99 will work. Or a, neg uh, a positive 99 times a negative 1 will work. And then we could just do that whole thing again, uh, like this. A negative times a positive, and a negative times a positive. So those are six different possibilities for numbers you can multiply to get negative uh, 99. Question uh, 11, Kenji spends $5 a week to buy a sports magazine. Represent the amount he spends in a year by an integer multiplication. So it's asking a lot of some students to say how many weeks in a year because I would guess as a math teacher that half of my students would not know that there are how many weeks in a year. 52, well, there you go, I'm wrong. So there are 52 weeks in a year. And since he is spending $5 a week, it is going to be 52 weeks of spending $5. So we're going to represent that with an integer sign of negative 5. And then B says calculate what that's going to be, and we're going to do it real quick. 50 times 5. I'm, not, I'm just not going to do 50. I'm going to do 50 times 5 is 250. Let's make a note of that. 2 times 5 is 10. You put those together, you get 260. Will it be a positive or negative? It is definitely negative because a positive times a negative is a negative. How much will he spend a year? Therefore, he will spend. Therefore, he spends. Therefore, he spends 260 bucks a year. How easy is that? $260 per year. Question 12. Uh, copy and complete each division statement. So I had positive 10. Divided into groups of positive 2, uh, you know what, we'll skip this one. I don't like it. And we said we would just determine each quotient for 13. Uh, same rules as before. How many 8s and 16? 16 divided by 8 is 2. Same signs, positive quotient. 14 divided by 2 is 7. Same signs, positive quotient. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. Different signs, negative quotient. Question 14 says, write a word problem you could solve using the expression negative 14 divided by positive 7. Uh, I owe, um, and you have different ones, but I owe 17 bucks. Sorry, $14, not 17. I owe $14. I want to divide them into, divide it into, divide it into seven smaller debts. Seven smaller debts. 
each debt is two dollars. That's mine. Yours can be different. Um, you say negative fourteen degrees out. Uh, divide it. No, that doesn't work either. This is the best one. There's a whole lot of different ones you can have, but if you have something different, just think of it that way. Question 15 says determine uh, the quotient using a number line. Uh, how many groups? So if I did this, I'm going to show you anyway. If I was to say I'm going to divide negative 18 into groups of negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. If I'm going to divide negative 18 into groups of negative 3, that's one group of negative 3, two groups of negative 3, three groups of negative 3, four groups of negative 3, five groups of negative 3, six groups of negative 3. If I said, what is negative 18 divided by negative 3, there are six groups of negative 3 and negative 18. So therefore, negative 18 divided by negative 3 is positive 6. There are six groups of negative 3 and negative 18. If you didn't do that one, no big deal. Uh, but that's the thinking you should have done for that one. I'm not going to test you on that one. Uh, without evaluating the quotients, determine which one is going to be the greatest. So this is going to have a negative value, whatever it is. This is going to have a positive value, regardless of what the number is. And this will have a negative value. So without having to do any work, I know the greatest quotient or the greatest solution will be a negative 247 divided by a negative 13. Eight minutes left. Let's see if we can finish this. Calculate. How many 25s are there in 75? How many 25s in 75? Three. How many 8s in 64? Here's a tough one. How many 5s in 85? I was going to be asking an easier one. How many 5s in 100? 20. How many less 5s do I need to get to 85 from 100? Three less than 20 is? 17. How many 11s in 88? Eight. So we have our numbers down. Now we just have to determine the signs. Same signs, positive. Different signs, negative. Different signs, negative. Same signs, positive. Question 18, if two integers have a quotient of negative 1, how are the integers related? We'll say A divided by B equals negative 1. What number divided by itself is ignoring the negative sign. Let's just go with one. What sign, what number divided by another number is one? What are the only two types of numbers I can put in there, Danny? I have to, I can put one divided by one. What else can I put? Three divided by three. I could put eight divided by eight. I could put anything divided by itself is one. Now, if I think about that as negative one, what has to happen to those two integers to make sure that the quotient is negative? They have to be opposite. So if I have a positive 8 here, I just have to have a negative 8 there. And if I go back to what Danny just said, if I have a 3 and a 3, I can have a negative 3 and a positive 3. It will equal a negative 1 as well. So the answer is, how are they related? Well, they are what we call opposite integers. If you divide opposite integers by each other, you will have a negative 1 quotient. And an opposite integer, in layman's terms, is if you take a number line and put 0 in the middle, Opposite integers will be numbers that are equidistant from 0 on a number line. So if I take negative 8 and 8, those would be the opposite integers. And when you combine them as a sum, not as a quotient, but as a sum, two opposite integers added together will always be 0. Two opposite integers divided by each other will always be negative 1. Question 19 says, six friends visited a zoo. The total cost of admission was $90. One of the group was celebrating his birthday, so the others agreed that he should not pay. How much did each of the others pay? So, uh, $90 divided between how many friends paid? Five people equals, actually, should we put negative 90? Mm, nah, we won't. Therefore, since five divided by, 100 divided by 5 was 20, 90 divided by 5 will be 10 less than that, $18 each. Question 20, calculate. Uh, these square brackets are here, meaning do this first. 
So we look in there for A. I have negative 3 multiplied by. I have a subtraction of integers. And the easiest way we said to subtract integers is what, Z? How do you subtract the easiest way? D flip change. So we're going to do adding the opposite to get 6. So I'm going to have negative 3 times a positive 6. That's what the brackets make plus 12. Notice how this and this stayed where it was. And when I simplified that, it just became a different number. It became 6. Now, the, the product of negative 3 and positive 6 is negative 18. So my next line is to simplify my multiplication in my bed mass. And a negative 18 plus a positive 12 is negative 6. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Any questions on that one? If we look at the next one, B, again, we have brackets, so we're going to do that first. So we have 12 divided by 5 take away 4 is 1, 5 take away 5 is 0, 5 take away 6 is negative 1, 5 take away 8 is negative 3. The rest comes down. Now, some people think that this is a bracket because there's brackets around it, but it's not actually a bracket for do this first. The reason why that bracket is there is to separate the negative symbol from the multiplication symbol. That's the only reason it's there. So we're going to do the multiplication or the division first. Which one? I do division first because multiplication and division is in the order you see it from left to right. So even though in bed mass, D comes first and then M, we don't do it in that order. We do it in the order they appear from left to right, and it happens to be division is first, but not because it's D first. So negative 4 take away 4 times negative 2 would be my next line. Then negative 4 take away the product of 4 and negative 2, which is negative 8. And notice how my subtraction sign is still there. And since the product is negative 8, I separate it with brackets. As Zarundus would tell you, keep flip change. The sum of a negative 4 and a positive 8 is a positive 4. We only have a couple minutes left, so we'll have to fast forward through this one. Uh, the sum of six integers is negative 42. What is the mean? So we learned that if you take A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F, the sum of six integers, if we were calculating the average, we would add those up and then divide by the number of terms to get the, uh, to get the average. So if this was negative 42, in order to get the average, I would have to divide it by 6. And negative 42 divided by 6 is negative 7. Do you have enough information to determine the six integers? No, you do not. Question 22. Uh, over a five-year period, the number of Manitobans living on farms decreased from 79,000 to 68,135. What was the mean change per year? So this is a tricky one. The population now take away the population before uh, divided by how many years? Divided by five years will be the average. I'll need a calculator for this one. I'll bring it over here. 68,135, 68,135. Take away 79,840 means the population dropped by 11,705. Take that 11,705 and divide it by five to get the average. And therefore, the mean change in population was negative or was uh, losing 2,341 people per year. <laughs>